Dangen Nira Danin Zgole Groena Review two A lot of material has been covered in the past eight lessons. Rather than detailing all the minutiae of every covered aspect of grammar here, only a certain few things will be clarified. Noun cases and verb tenses will not be discussed here. For noun cases, see lessons one, six, eight, or eleven. For verb cases, see almost every lesson from lesson five onward. Most of them deal with some aspect of verbs. If you don't understand a concept, either review the relevant lesson or message a question to this YouTube account. And unlike the first review, there is some new material here, so skipping this video is not recommended. First, the adverbs introduced in the second lesson are all derived from adjectives. Eomorg, well, comes from eomin, good. Uhogorg, neutrally, comes from uhogin, neutral. And zevrorg, poorly, comes from zevrin, bad. Note that mos eomorg and mos eomin mean very different things. As an adverb, eomorg refers to the verb, the manner in which you are being. As an adjective, eomin refers to the subject, in this case saying you are a good person. Similarly, mos zevrorg refers to your state of being, while mos zevrin would mean that you are an evil person. So if you're not feeling well and having a bad day, you'd say mos Zevrorg. However, if you're an immoral individual who's plotting various crimes, you'd say mos zevrin. Along with nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and prepositional phrases, verbs can also be substituted for a question word. Such instances require the use of niskoi, to do, as an auxiliary verb. The simplest of these questions you already know. Eme niskom. What are you doing? This is the basic form of the verb question. All others will be built on this one. As an example, let's take the sentence Nen bava kelok. To ask what the dog is doing, you'd say Eme nen bava niskok. As you can see, the subject gets inserted between Eme and niskoi. More complex questions about verbs will require the word ask which doesn't really translate into English. Esk is used with unusual verb forms to show the proper relationships of nouns to it. For example, what are you doing to the cat? Would be, eme niskom eskenen pukne. Now this is subtle. Since eme already functions as the object for niskom, there can't be another object. So esk is used, followed by the word for cat in the accusative. This applies for all cases. For example, Eme nen selfaskudokra niskok eskenen sumerk nen laske would be very awkward to translate into English. It would have to be something like, What is the police officer doing with the cookie to the girl? Also notice how esk only appears once in such constructions. To answer these questions, remove Eme, niskoi, and esk and put a verb in their place. So the answer to the previous question could be nen selfaskodokra beok nen sumerk nen laske. As one more example of this, if we take the sentence nen haken tasma varmkok nen rise gludem, the female warrior is killing the man with a stick. We can ask what the she warrior is doing by saying eme nen haken tasma niskok eskenen rise gludem which would roughly mean, what is the female warrior doing to the man with a stick? Another concept you may possibly be having trouble with, the correlatives. All correlatives are made up of two parts, a prefix determining the mood and a suffix determining the topic. The prefixes you've learned so far are a for the question or what words, ta for the demonstrative or that words, yeta 
for the near demonstrative or this words and ikota for the far demonstrative or yonder words all of these prefixes can be attached to a suffix the ones you've learned so far are ma for things sta for people min for adjectives nebin for possession lu for adverbs lel for places lorm for times and ri for reasons so for examples we have emma what tasta that person yetamin this ikotanebin yonder persons eldu how in what way talel there yetalorm at this time and ikotari for yonder reason not all of these will make sense most of the time but in theory any prefix can be put with any suffix one final thing some clarification on the word kub in english there is no distinction in spelling or sound between transitive and intransitive verbs note the difference between i froze the water and the water froze the verb itself does not change but in danganmyra kub is used to further disambiguate that a verb is intransitive so if we define smita as water those two examples in danganmyra would be skiketes nen smite and nen smita kub skiketek if you simply said nen smita skiketek it would be assumed that the water actively froze other things and didn't just in and of itself freeze as a further example if we take wehmoi to mean to spin and irma to mean ball then we can say the following Wech mos nen irme, I'm spinning the ball, and nen irma kub wech mok, the ball is spinning. You've now completed two whole units of lessons in Dangan Mira. Well done, but there is still more to come. So if you feel underprepared to take on the new lessons, you should probably go back and review the previous ones. However, if you're confident in your budding knowledge of the language, Feel free to start the next unit in the next video.